Hello viewer, welcome to Hope Channel Kenya, Let in the Family. I want to take this moment to welcome you again to the program The Identity. I'm your host, Samuel Mangi. And I am Masi Cherono To. Welcome once again. Glad to have you on our show. We're also glad to have our guest. I think, Aston, you've become a resident <laughs> guest. Uh, yeah. I believe you remember her from last time. Welcome back, Gloria, to the show. Thank we Good missed to have you, by you the way. Thank you so much. Yeah. How have you been? Good. How's it going? Wonderful. <laughs> Johnny Mingi Bado? Yeah. That is good. <laughs> anyway, viewer, today we are going to discuss about drug and substance abuse. What when we will be discussing at length in that. I'm sure that you've watched previous episodes, but I would like to urge you to spare uh, many minutes of your time to dive with us in this subject. Now, friends, what is what is a drug? Eston, what is a drug? Uh, in the simplest terms possible, a drug is a substance which, when ingested and taken up by an organism, it changes the normal operations of that system, of that uh, uh, org organism. Mm -hmm. uh, scientists may say that it changes the physiological uh, aspect of, of, uh, uh, of this particular organism. For example, it might increase metabolism, it might change certain patterns of operation in this uh, organism or in this animal. So basically that's what a drug is. I'm going to say class 6 definitions. Eddie, it was on point. Mercy. Well, he has said it all. Our resident <laughs> dictionary, <laughs> working dictionary, has said it in simple terms that a drug is a substance that alters the normal functioning of an organism's system. Functioning of system, we have the digestive system, breathing system, nervous system, we also have the, the brain, we have the immunity, we have generally the body operations. Mm -hmm. So if you take something, if maybe like the people who take tea, like tea, there's some people who if they don't take tea, their head aches. So that means that their body's functioning has been altered by their intake of tea. Mm -hmm. In that if they don't take tea, mm -hmm. their head aches. Mm -hmm. If, for example, I take water, water does not really affect my my system. In fact, it, it enhances my system. It makes my digestive system work as it should. Mm -hmm. So it is not an it alters it but it does not it, it it enhances the functioning but you see something that alters means that it changes the way things the work. normal the normal the normality yes. yeah. mm. you want to add on it yeah uh -huh. just the way she said and my brother said um a drug interferes with the system of your body system well um in matters of health wise uh, emotionally Psychologically, yeah, that's what I can say because they've said it all. Some emotionally, <laughs> working dictionary. <laughs> Eston, yes, there, what does the di dictionary stipulate a drug is due? It's uh, actually dictionary. Oh, uh, let's Thank see you. what the dictionary is gonna say. <laughs> uh, but even as we're looking at it, uh -huh. uh, yes, there are drugs which actually alter the state of emotion of people, yeah. mm -hmm. like antidepressants, they change how your emotion is. Uh -huh. So, this is the definition of a drug. A drug is basically, in pharmacology this is, it says a substance used to treat an illness, relieve a symptom, or modify a chemical process in the body for a specific purpose. Ulianza na parabole ngini hapo siju ulisema nini? Oh, that's pharmacology. Yeah, okay, nini. The study of pharmacy. The study yeah. of pharmacy. Oh, pharmacology. The study, the study mm. of drugs, yes. Pharmacology. Hey, to <laughs> yes, it says a substance used to treat an illness, mm -hmm. relieve a symptom, or modify a chemical process in the body for a specific purpose. Uh -huh. I think yeah. the drugs that most people know, that mm -hmm. one is, I think, the medical drug. That's yeah. the medical drug, yeah. Yes, the... But, but yes. to Komusha Mongolia, something further apart from... Ill, mm -hmm. Yes, but you see, he's talked about the chemical processes, processes of yes. the body. Mm -hmm. Well, maybe we can look at other definitions, if any of mm -hmm. the drugs, and then from there. But what I'm deducing from that is, you know, it is something that is treating an illness. The way mm -hmm. you go to hospital, unapewa malaria queen, unapewa paracetamol, piriton, piriton. Yeah, tunapenda kila sedatives, mtu. Mm -hmm. and yes, and the so you're given, yes, they are painkillers, mm -hmm. sedatives, mm -hmm. antibiotics, antibiotics 
Team Ulan, Suppressants. What? Yes. The Pressants. You know, there's also another definition of a drug which is also very interesting here. Uh-huh. It says anything such as a substance, emotion, or action to which one is addicted. Emotion or action. Substance or, substance action. or action in which you are addicted. Wow. Uh, you, you, you see when what is addiction? Addiction. Uh, <laughs> probably all of us will try to answer this question yeah. <laughs> because it, it also leads us to another question. Yeah. Uh-huh. Uh, but when you look at addic- addiction, is basically uh, being in a state whereby you can't be able to operate yeah. without uh, using something. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, for example. Have you ever had people being addicted to other people whereby you become obsessive with them? Yes, it is scary. Yeah. Uh, How do you get addicted to somebody? I've, 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 I've even had an elder of mine saying that you can actually even get addicted to love. You're addicted to love. Huh? As in, uh, you, 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 see, you see, love is an emotion, yeah? Uh-huh. And uh, when you're in love, uh, there are some you're addicted, ke- yeah, you're addicted to it because there's some chemical process. Yeah, there's some hormones which are released, some feel good hormones. Uh, yeah. I think they're called endorphins, mm. which are released. and <laughs> They kind of they put you in a feel good state, so you always like to be in that feel good state. Mm-hmm. So you eventually find that you are, you become addicted to that love. emotion. Yeah, yeah, you become addicted to love. Mm-hmm. And when someone breaks your heart, what happens? You well, get it broken. is commonly said love is an addiction, but you can't get out of it. It's hard. So think it's a drug. <laughs> that is, <laughs> that, that is so such a discussion. Today, we're getting that a drug is just something that alters your normal functioning exactly. yeah. chemical processes yeah. mm-hmm. emotions actions mm-hmm. it is something that you cannot li- no that is the second meaning of a drug that, something that you simply meaning, can't live without yeah. this first primary meaning is something that you use to treat an illness yeah. Yeah. yes now yeah. going back to the, to the topic is drug and substance abuse mm-hmm. so what is substance abuse well drugs have been defined as substances so mm-hmm. maybe mm-hmm. But I want to believe substance abuse, it can totally refer to something different. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So what is substance abuse? You can also integrate the whole idea of drugs. So. Mm-hmm. Just Vile Alisema, that mm-hmm. um, it, it is used in a wrong way, as he explained the second meaning. Mm-hmm. It's, substance abuse is to use something in a harmful way, okay? Mm-hmm. You use it to the match of it. You use it to... to to take down something that maybe you're high, let me say, let me now use it. Mm-hmm. Let me now use it the way we, we, we use to the terms um, Tani. Unavuta, mm-hmm. uh, you inject yourself mm-hmm. to cure down the maybe depression, mm-hmm. to calm down your senses. Maybe some cannot survive until you take bang so that you may work hard or eat. Mm-hmm. There mm-hmm. are different uh, types of substance abuses, yeah. Mm-hmm. Probably just giving the definition of a substance before I give the definition of a substance abuse from okay. uh, what the bi- uh, what the dictionary actually says. Yeah. A drug. I'm just going to give two definitions. One of them is physical matter or material, uh, mm. basically anything which is tangible. Yeah. Then the other one saying drugs or illegal narcotics. Mm. Then uh, now substance abuse is basically the overindulgence oh. in and dependent on a drug or another chemical. Mm-hmm. So when you overindulge in a in a chemical, you find that you are doing what is called substance abuse. It may not be something which is uh, per se uh, an illegal na- narcotic or something, mm. but it might be something which ca- you can be able to get over the counter. But when you overindulge in it, it becomes substance abuse. Yeah. Mm. Overuse. Yeah, overuse. Overuse. Yes, like, like I think in Kenya, it's a common trait that people are abusing over the counter drugs. Mm. Exactly. Mm-hmm. You find someone, a slight headache, maramoja. <laughs> so over the counter, this is uh, the, the chemistry. Mm. Then over the counter. Um, this is a chemistry. Yes. Chemist. The chemist. Your chemist. Okay, yo. Yeah. Yo. <laughs> yes. uh-huh. This is a nanuka without any specific prescription yeah. from uh-huh. the doctor. So those are the over counter. Yes, um, over yeah. the counter mm-hmm. drugs. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Now prescribed drugs can also be overindulged because exactly. we found people who are addicted to sleeping pills. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. They have been prescribed by the doctor that you, you need sleeping pills mm-hmm. to sleep. But these people what they do is they take them and they they become they cannot sleep without mm-hmm. without them so you know it alters your body's shutting down on its own yeah. mm-hmm. yes uh, I've, I've picked a, I've, I've picked some vibe kutoka kwenu mm-hmm. that it's overindulgence and dependability you can't function without it and that that brings a new a new a new perception of addiction we lose us and i want to to bring it back again so if we have already defined what what a drug is and what substance abuse is mm. so what is addiction now 
glow? Addiction. Let us check from the dictionary <laughs> before I, I get inside. Uh -huh. I, I think I gave a definition of addiction yeah. mm -hmm. uh, when I was trying to explain uh, drug. Uh, yeah, the drugs. Mm -hmm. uh, but let's just look at it from yeah. the dictionary perspective. Mm -hmm. Well, you see, as he looks, huh, there's drug abuse, there's drug misuse. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There's use. Use is the normal. Uh -huh. Now, misuse is using the drug for that which mm -hmm. it is not meant to. Mm -hmm. uh, like, I remember... Something, there are some drugs which are used as cures. Yeah. I believe cocaine mm -hmm. was used as a drug for remedy, mm -hmm. but now people misused it and started abusing it to get high. Even mm -hmm. marijuana. Mm -hmm. Yes, and mm -hmm. even marijuana. Mm -hmm. These were originally for medicative use, exactly. but people converted them for their own personal enjoyment to get that high feeling. Mm -hmm. Yes. So mm -hmm. that, is, that is misuse. Mm -hmm. That is using the drug for the purpose which it is not intended. Now, you see, for example, most of the people who go to the chemist, yeah, and they buy maybe drugs for malaria. Mm -hmm. That time, they have not even deduced that they do have malaria, yeah. mm -hmm. but they just go and get. So they are misusing that, that drug mm -hmm. by simply because you have headache and stomachache, you have malaria. You know, <laughs> that is misuse. Now, abuse, on the other hand, we have just uh, figure, fig figured out is overindulgence mm -hmm. and dependence on, on something for your normal functioning. Mm -hmm. If you have to depend on maybe sugar cane mm -hmm. to function, although I've never really heard of someone who is addicted <laughs> to functions on, on soya, for soya milk, mm -hmm. I've, ne I've never heard of someone addicted to healthy things, by the way. Mm -hmm. Maybe if you're out there, dear viewer, you, you can just contact us. holla on <laughs> Facebook, on Twitter. I'd really like to know you. But it's very hard to find someone who's addicted to mango juice. Mm -hmm. It's very hard to find someone who's addicted to 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 actually eating ginger. Ukula <laughs> tutanga I think it's it's hard to find mm -hmm. this kind of indulgence in the in the in the healthy, healthy stuff. Mm -hmm. yes. How I wish that we would be temperate mm -hmm. even in those other things I, as I, we are temperate I, in the healthy stuff. I think you can look at why people are not in the, why, why people are not addicted to the healthy stuff. Yeah. You know because it, 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 it well, too. um, addiction according to the dictionary is um. A state that is characterized by compulsive drug use or compulsive engagement mm -hmm. in rewarding behavior despite negative consequences. Mm -hmm. And another definition is a habit or practice that damages or jeopardizes or shortens one's life but when seized causes trauma. Wow. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I think I, I will not add anything to that. Yeah, that it is may explain really to Coyote. Mm -hmm. But now I'm left uh, wondering. Now, if that's the case, I cannot function in this, then that means there has to be something that has led me to it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There has to be. Any, I, I, I want to believe you cannot wake up one day and say, me, Leo, yeah, yeah, Leo, yeah. You know? Mm -hmm. So maybe you can take us to, meaning as a, to drive to that point. Ask them. Uh, when, when I look at it, it just uh, comes about from what we've been learning through the past weeks. Mm. And one of them was peer pressure. Uh, we find that, uh, for example, uh, drinking, uh, these are some of the uh, abuses that occur uh, when f start occurring when people start going through uh, some stages of education. For example, when you go to high school and you see all your friends drinking and you want to uh, please the crowd and you find yourself going to drink also, yeah. you find that you actually push to do such things. Uh, very rarely do we find someone being addicted to something uh, be because initially this person was uh, just say to do that thing by, by, by their own selves. Mm -hmm. But we also find in unique cases, uh, for example, when people go and abuse medical drugs, mm -hmm. uh, for example, when someone goes through an operation and uh, w one of the uh, drugs that is given as uh, pain relievers is uh, morphine. And morphine is basically uh, an addictive, it's actually narcotic mm. outside the hospital, <laughs> a narcotic outside the hospital, yeah. but just used to relieve the pain. And once you get uh, hooked on it, you find that it becomes something which is almost complete. And I also like the definition that we have read uh, from the dictionary mm -hmm. about addiction. They're saying that something that causes that damages, that causes damage to your system and might lead to death, but when you cease using it, mm -hmm. it leads to trauma. You see, when, when, when you become addicted to something, you find that at the end of the day, uh, when you try to stop them, there, there's what we call uh, relapse. Withdrawal, or yeah, withdrawal symptoms, symptoms which can re lead to re relapse. Mm -hmm. You find that this person uh, only behaves normally when 
they partake of these drugs yeah. but they, when they stop you find this person starts starting to sweat you might find this person uh, weird yeah just have, having some very weird behavior mm-hmm. and they, they might even collapse have fits mm-hmm. uh, they might have tremors and it's because uh, their body has already been altered to be able to operate with these drugs but when it's removed it's like they're in another p- uh, situation of which the drug that they're missing becomes another drug mm-hmm. so well, well i can i can say yeah I beg to disagree with something Eston has said. Okay. And I would like to say that sometimes, mm-hmm. it, okay, you've said most of the time it's because of peer pressure. Mm-hmm. But you know, some people, the environment they live in, they mm-hmm. simply can't avoid it. Mm-hmm. I mean, look at the people in Mombasa. Mm-hmm. The people in Mombasa, drugs is rampant. Mm-hmm. As in, people live in villages mm-hmm. and drugs is drugs is just rampant yeah. so your environment at times it might not even be because of your friends mm-hmm. and look at someone who's maybe born in a family that brews changa mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. i mean that kid will start drinking changa at the mm-hmm. age of three years mm-hmm. and not because of the peers but mm-hmm. because of the environment look at a, yes mm-hmm. look at a place it's like new. look at a place like you know even the mm-hmm. environment yeah look at a place like the city mm-hmm. you will find that most of our teenagers most of our youth are engaged in drug abuse not because maybe because they live in Nairobi mm-hmm. but when they were living maybe in Ushago when they were living back in the countryside mm-hmm. yeah mm-hmm. some of these things they are not exposed to them yeah. but once you get into an environment where these things are available mm-hmm. you want to try mm-hmm. curiosity human nature defines that hey nikiona hiyo kitu hapo hiyo bang in <laughs> in a car, in a car color white. Uh, you know the first thing I'll do is I'll want to touch it. Okay, uh, I don't know if bang is white. Uh, Correct me if I'm wrong, <laughs> Eston. <laughs> I am not hinting at anything, but correct me if I'm wrong. Cannabis sativa is, is actually a plant, so bang must be green unless it's dried then it turns brown. Yeah. But that's just because I read it somewhere. <laughs> and because okay. it's written in a picture. <laughs> yeah, let me okay, see from yeah. that. So so let us work with assumption yeah. okay. because it seems uh, No one here knows any drugs unless some you are willing to offer further information. Yes, I am willing to offer on uh, pictorial evidence. <laughs> so, not, not then, right evidence. so if I see that bang is color white, yeah. I have never seen it, Eston has never seen it, Gloria mm-hmm. has never seen it, Sam mm-hmm. has never seen it. Mm-hmm. I see it and I'm like, eh, it you know it was bangi. So I start cutting it. Eston like, eh, ebunione. Mm-hmm. Eston me have cut it and have, you know, mm-hmm. felt mm-hmm. the and texture. Yeah. Yeah. Eston will be like, eh, He knows us. Mm-hmm. If he goes a further step. Kidogo, kidogo, Gloria kidogo. goes and he's like, eh, mm. mbona inafaka kama chumvi? Mm. You know, mm-hmm. eh, then then Sam is like, eh, sinasikia na chomba, sinasikia na watu. Sikia na watu wangu. So so you know, it, it starts but, maybe from from curiosity. just curiosity. But, but still, it leads it leads us back to uh, the the point of uh, peer pressure because you, you know n- n- number one Uh, peer pressure doesn't really have to be someone telling you to do it yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. it might just be that people Internal are doing pressure. it mm-hmm. and and and, and may, may, maybe out of curiosity mm-hmm. because because you've been seeing people do it you always want to uh, to engage in it and, and just, just because of, like for example uh, there's this thing that I saw which was happening in I think it is in one of the Asian countries it must be Philippines mm-hmm. where they say that it has the highest uh, population of smokers and they showed children as young as three years old smoking as in you, when you just walk in the streets everyone is smoking yeah. mm-hmm. and, 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 and 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 you know you, you might ask yourself how do these people uh, how do they just catch on smoking it can't, it can't be curiosity because uh, uh, that's I, i want to believe yeah. it's environment it, it's the environment but but still mm-hmm. the environment pushes you to do this mm-hmm. because number one uh, it must be someone uh, showed you that mm-hmm. this thing can be done for ex- uh, like uh, when you look at things like cigarettes mm-hmm. when you look things at things like uh, alcohol for example yeah It's a thing that we always see advertisements mm-hmm. on the television. Mm-hmm. You see that that's kind of like a kind of pressure. It may not be peer pressure but it's a kind of pressure because uh, like like uh, when you look at this uh, alcohol advertisement you see people uh, having the time of their life there. Right. They it, it looks like and you know they, ah, and yeah, they exactly. make it look like something really awesome. Like like Maro comma Silver. <laughs> yeah. I, you feel like you, you, you feel that energy yeah? yes and yeah. you feel and they make it look so cool and people are laughing mm-hmm. and you know people are seated with mm-hmm. friends hanging mm-hmm. out so you with the, maybe you don't have friends and mm-hmm. you're like hey maybe if i try this thing mm-hmm. then it may work mm-hmm. I'm, 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 you know I, i have a friend of mine uh she told me that uh the most honest people 
<laughs> I'm drunk and, 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 and no, it's actually true because they don't know what they're saying. Mm-hmm. They're up there, they're high, they're like all over the place. So the yeah. only thing working is the booze so inside the brain. I think then that leads us on to maybe the next part of our discussion, mm-hmm. yeah. which is what are the effects mm-hmm. of of taking this drug. Yeah. Mm-hmm. We've identified cocaine, mm-hmm. bang, morphine, mm-hmm. alcohol, cigarettes, Opioids. and I'm sure our viewers know these drugs. Some of them need drugs amtani, they have local names, Ju Shisha. Mm-hmm. I hear Shisha Shisha is nowadays like just the normal just the, the, yes, the norms norm thing for campus students. There are so many other things, you know, I might not know them, unfortunately. I have zero drug abusing friends. <laughs> limited knowledge to that. I have, yeah. Yes, I have limited knowledge to this. But I'm sure our viewers can identify with maybe other drugs that we've not mentioned. Now, what are the effects that these drugs can cause? You've mm-hmm. talked about being honest. Now, mm-hmm. is that an effect? <laughs> That's a positive uh, effect. <laughs> I, I don't believe it's positive. <laughs> I, I think it's, you, you're just lured to it. For example, if somebody is drunk, what to kimuza kitu and as a combat kitu brutally honest you know boss can you if if uh, so it wrong? means your mind mm-hmm. has been altered yeah yes. your yes. thought yeah, process the normal has state. been changed mm-hmm. in the, you know in, in i want to believe in a, in a normal state ile ya kawaida mm-hmm. you'll be cautious and sensitive about what somebody will think about what you're going to say about some yeah. subject mm-hmm. now i want to believe mtu akiwa high mm-hmm. you, you that that thing is removed Mm-hmm. So it's like kill a kid to spill them out. That's mm-hmm. why I want to believe. Mm-hmm. That's why uh, marriage, marriage, in any issues are spelled out. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Boss, any, that's what you go through. Mm-hmm. Eh? I want to believe that's one of the effects mm-hmm. I, I, I like to well, highlight. Well, it's unfortunate, yeah, because mm-hmm. drinking and cigarette abuse are the most common drugs abuse yeah. in Kenya. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, I, 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 I went last year. I went for a mission somewhere, and in this place, ninety per, not so many of the men. Are, are taking drugs, are mm-hmm. alcoholics. Mm-hmm. And so many of them came to our mission sites, to our open evangelistic campaign site, mm-hmm. yeah? and they, they expressed their desire to leave this alcohol. Mm-hmm. But now you see, as much as they want to leave it, we also have to investigate why are they doing it. Mm-hmm. And one of the reasons that came out was idleness. Mm-hmm. It's a farming society. These people farm in the morning, in the afternoon, there's nothing left to do. Mm-hmm. So idleness will lead people to, to, to what leads people to this drug. Yeah. For, so for this men, we were able to identify that they don't have much, they have a lot of time on their mm-hmm. hands exactly. and their bars. They were, I counted, I actually took my time to count the bars in that place. Mm. There were 12 bars. Yeah. There are 12 bars here. So when you go hanging out in a shop, you know the way men like sitting outside shops just yeah. for the bigger story. There's a <laughs> bar next there. Chill zone. Yes. So I think, I think idleness, so we need to also to identify why do people do it. Peer pressure is one of them. Peer, uh, idleness is one of them. Loneliness. Yes. Uh, uh, loneliness. Uh, loneliness. loneliness is mm. and I think depression is one thing. Yeah. Depression. Yeah. Or depression, depression, depression. depression. So it's an, an escape. Stress. It's like a coping mm. mechanism. Exactly. Mm. You want to cope out. I, I, yes, you want to run away <clears throat> from the world. Yeah. You you just don't want stress. Mm. You, you've mentioned entertainment and mm. advertisement, yeah. Gloria. It does. It does? Because, I mean, the things we see on television, mm-hmm. the advertisements, you just see, but you want to test because the kind of um, show that has been brought up on the television is so... Inter- is so enticing. Um, yeah, it's very enticing and mm-hmm. eye-grabbing, you know. You just mm-hmm. have to try. Like, as you say, the beer, the alcohol industry, the way they advertise. There's also smokes, I mean, cigarettes and mm-hmm. all. The way they just advertise them. You just want to try, you know. That's why the youths have really endured because there's nothing else to do. Sit idle on the television mm-hmm. and just see what is happening. Then go outside, then try. I'm inclined to to to, to pursue. I'm inclined to tell us to pursue to proceed further, mm. but we're running short of time. Viewer, I'm very sure that you know very many of these reasons. You can share them through our Facebook handle, our our Twitter handle, or follow us on Hope Channel Kenya on Twitter at Hope underscore Kenya. On Facebook, Hope Channel Kenya. Like, subscribe to our YouTube channel. Share your views on this subject. Now, you can also follow me on Twitter at Sami Mangi. You can also follow Marcy at MC uh, Follow us, like us, share your views on this subject. We will be going on a short break. And in this period, I've been told more than once, Siju Kuimba, I am not musical. I want to share this moment and uh, usher you into a talent seg- segment where uh, we interacted with someone and shared with us their talent. And it 
exchange it someday for a crown. Ooh, on a hill far away stood an old rugged cross, the emblem of suffering. And I love that old cross where the dearest and best for a world of lost sinners was slain. So I'll cherish the old ragged cross till my trophies at last I lay down I will cling to the old ragged cross and exchange it someday for a crown so I'll cherish the old ragged cross till my trophies at last I lay down. I will cling to the old ragged cross and exchange someday for a crown I will cling to the old ragged cross, old ragged cross and exchange it someday As we went on a break, we were discussing about drugs and substance abuse. We defined what drug is, what a drug is, what a substance is, what abuse is, what misuse is, and what addiction is. And we also looked at some of the factors that might cause people in the society to, 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 to resort to drugs and substances. Now once again, we're going to be looking and discussing about the effects that the drug has, what the drug have to do to an individual, to the society, to the family, either financial, okay, I don't know, maybe <laughs> you can tell me, yeah, maybe you can tell me, we can start, Eston, you're right mm -hmm. next to me. Yes. Uh, I don't know if you, you, you know, since you're not a drug abuser, I assume, mm -hmm. but perhaps might you have an inkling about what are the effects or have you observed things that have resulted in our society, in families mm -hmm. because, of, because of drug abuse to individuals? Uh, well, what, what I can say is, uh, when looking at drug abuse, there's usually two things that occurs. Either you are affected personally, or the society becomes affected because of mm -hmm. your own uh, misgivings in terms of the indulgence. Yeah. Uh, so when you look at the individual person, uh, there are so many things that occur. As we said, a drug is something that alters 
your normal functioning. So you might find that this person might start becoming uh, a bit aggressive, that is like on the social, social uh, aspect. You might find that this person might even become sick. Mm -hmm. uh, for example, I, I, I'm, I'm sure all of us have seen uh, the cigarette packets these days. Uh, they show some very disturbing images of uh, how people would end up in the, uh, uh, after consuming yeah. uh, this drug for a while. Mm -hmm. And you find that you get cancers, uh, you find that you might even get some uh, very weird diseases and generally your immunity uh, goes low. Uh, you find that these people, uh, they age quicker. When you use drugs, you age quicker. Mm -hmm. uh, and you are prone to, uh, to death through accidents because drinking, driving, mm -hmm. drink, uh, drunk driving can lead to things like death. When you look at uh, the social aspect, you find that these people, uh, uh, they, they are also part of a family. They mm -hmm. come from family and f from families and you find that these families most of the time become broken uh, because probably the finances are not uh, being uh, cashed into the family and these families become broken you might find that uh, these people stop doing their duties and then the due diligence towards the families and things of course are con choices have consequences uh, you find that these people if, even their friends their friends they might lose friends uh, they might uh, start associating with people who uh, for who are actually uh, going to lead them away, going to lead them astray, and you find that generally, socially, mentally, physically, they just ha they just change. I mean, I also want to add to that, yeah. Nisemi. There is one kawaida. I, I think it, it's never said, mm -hmm. but then it leads to shame. Mm -hmm. Yeah. As exactly. in seriously, mm -hmm. I remember some time back, uh, one of our one of our local TV stations aired some guy who was drunk properly. Mm -hmm. I properly. Mm -hmm. lose. Okay, his locomotion was altered. Mm -hmm. I, I get him mm -hmm. And when it was highlighted, I, I, I did a follow up of his story and merely touched touch in the way that you know, that, that, uh, that itself ni, the shame and you bring to him. Mm -hmm. ni hangi deal mm -hmm. You can't hide away from it. it. You, you mm -hmm. can't run away from it. People will take it as ni, eh, ni fun, yes. Mm -hmm. But then mm -hmm. there's a lot of shame, but. Actually, I, even Actually mm -hmm. I do agree with you because mm -hmm. in our first ever episode we talked about identity. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know identity is also formed by your behavior. Mm -hmm. So you see, this guy behaved in, as a drunkard. Guys started associating him with being drunk. drunk At yeah. first it was cool, hanging out with friends, eh, booze, mm -hmm. blah, blah. Mm -hmm. But now as it became his identity. And William Levy. William Levy. And that's why you find <laughs> our identity is something that can never leave us. You will mm -hmm. find in my phone book, in Eston's phone book, <laughs> in Gloria's phone book, in Sam's phone book. William Levy. William Levy. Driver, mm -hmm. taxi. You know, people are associating with something you do <laughs> eh, and something you've tagged. Eh? Ule, uh, De mm -hmm. uh, like maybe I will save Eston, Eston Church, mm -hmm. Gloria HCK. Mm -hmm. You know, I will save people mm -hmm. depending on uh, maybe Ule oh, Club. Yes, Ule Club. Mm -hmm. yes. So someone will identify you, Mlevi. Mm -hmm. Someone will identify me, Demwakanisa. Mm -hmm. So you see, it is up to you. The shame is true because mm -hmm. the identity that you get is not a positive mm -hmm. identity. Mm -hmm. I'd rather be called Masiwa Maka. Ama Masiwa, Wamaziwa, you know those, those mm. names that people Mama use. Boga, Mama, Mama Boga, Boga. Masi Piki Piki, Masi Onda, <laughs> Masi, Masi Oteli, you know, uh -uh. there are those things that people, but you'd rather be tagged any of those things in the phone book, but not Masi Mlevi. Yeah. And the shame is something you cannot escape. Imagine drinking, okay, Christ accepts us as we are. Mm -hmm. Christ accepts us with our garments, like the prodigal son, the father did not embrace him after he had changed. Mm -hmm. The father embraced him while he was the same. And, and Christ will always yeah. welcome us back to his fold as we are. But that does not mean that we go out there and waste ourselves yeah. and come back. Mm -hmm. So you see, because not everyone is like Christ. Mm -hmm. Not I might come back here, Nimelewa, mm -hmm. Eston will be like, oh, 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 okay. Mm -hmm. His image will change. Yeah. Yeah. Gloria will be like my sister. Pole, she comes, she takes care of me. Some will be like, Nilijua tu. Uyo tu anakanga tu. Aliku anakatu kwa ribika. You know, so not everyone will embrace your shame with love. Yeah. Some people will embrace your shame with so much, you will feel the distaste and you will feel the, the hatred oozing from, the, from a distance. Mm -hmm. But Christ, Christ is the ultimate Embracer of us all. Yeah. You, you, you know, something that she said that uh, I think we really need to emphasize is uh, when you take drugs and when you start having 
these uh, sporadic uh, behaviors. You, you see, once your identity becomes changed, it becomes changed forever, especially when it's changing towards the negative. Mm-hmm. It changes towards the forever. But when you're coming from that real obsession that you are in, going back to, to being a good person, you know, it takes a, a very long time for people to process that you're actually changing. Mm. True. Yeah. True. They say that Rome was not built in a day, yeah. mm-hmm. but uh, it can be destroyed in a day. Mm-hmm. So, uh, so can character. So can character. Mm-hmm. Uh, we need to understand that even when uh, we're looking at drugs, uh, if you engage in drugs and uh, you see these behaviors, these behaviors uh, which are very weird start showing up, know that people are going to tag you that for life. Mm-hmm. Uh, you, you may change, God may change you, but always know that someone somewhere is always going to associate you with that kind of uh, behavior. The, uh, I would like to take it to, to, to divert Kidogo too from mm-hmm. our discussion. Uh, this is something that I feel we should, we should really air out. Mm-hmm. G, and I also want you to, to, to bring us to, through this. Kunei saying in a sema, okifungia mtu sana, alafu apate lete mwenye takuja kutoka. Atokanga na uzuri. Atokanga na an explain to the negative. Explode. And explain it like, hey, unashindo boss. Kwa nili, is how. So, have you, have you, have you seen people go through that? Well, in, in matters of drugs, yes, people have. There are, well, parents, our parents are really trying so hard to bring us up in a very well manner. Because, I mean, spoil the child, spare the road, spoil the child. Mm-hmm. So, but you're not uh, exposing your child, not in a bad way though. Mm-hmm. You're not telling the child the effects of what is happening when you take this, mm-hmm. the effects of drugs, the effects of... Uh, Many things, you know. Mm-hmm. Now, so, what well, happened? you see, but this effect, yeah, I think this effect, we, I, 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 I feel we've not fully exhausted them. Mm-hmm. Because, you know, once you understand the effects, cause we've looked at the cause, mm-hmm. effects, once you understand the effects, then we can come up with ways to, to counteract this effect. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Now, mm-hmm. one of the effects uh, from personal experience is family. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. As a drug abuser or a substance user, you will not just influence yourself. You will hurt your family around you. In that, um, I, I know of a case scenario where drug users become abusive. Mm-hmm. Husbands beat their wives. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Some of the drug users, because they need money, they do not provide for their family. Mm-hmm. Uh, and some of these families become so desolate. Or at times they start picking, pinching things. Mm-hmm. Your wife works. And you see some money there, and eh, yako imeisha. Bana. So you take Grand your wife's checksum. money. So mm-hmm. you, you, or you're a son or a daughter somewhere, and because your parents cannot give you the money to, 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 to help you with this addiction, you start stealing things. Or you start, if it's a lady, to start looking for a sponsor. Or mm-hmm. if it's a man, you start looking for a sugar, sugar mommy. Mm-hmm. Because this drug. Some of them are cheaply available, Mm -hmm. but some of them are expensive. Mm -hmm. And the expensive ones and the cheap ones alike are, are, but you see, the money, if I calculate by the age, maybe you spend 100 shillings on a bottle. If you would have saved that that money for like 100 bob for a month, Mm -hmm. that is already 3,000. That 3,000 can sponsor me for mission. Please bring (laughs) that money. You know, that money can sponsor the church development, you Mm -hmm. know. That money can so much sponsor the can children going yeah, to yeah. Kampuri. That money can buy 30 great hopes. Mm. I mean, you can become an evangelist with just one bottle of alcohol by buying one great hope. <laughs> I mean, so this money, if uh, that is an effect, financial yeah. loss. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So one, one, another effect, uh, I've talked of family, maybe violence. Yeah, mm. You resort to violence and you start beating your family members. Mm-hmm. You start beating your wife. You start beating your husband. Okay, mm-hmm. I've not really heard of this wife beating husband it happens. drunk. They, 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 they pour water. Not water. Unless, they, they pour if, water. If, water. if they not in water. Kenya, you must have not heard that. Because in Kenya, it, it is rampant. Yeah. It is rampant. rampant. Well, I just came back. <laughs> <laughs> I just came back from, from outside Nairobi. Yeah. <laughs> so, so, not outside Kenya. Yeah, so, maybe, I don't know. Anyway, another effect that I can say is also your social life. Yeah. The friends who you hang out with, I think you start wanting to be yourself. Many mm. people who take drugs, it gets to a point they don't want come mm-hmm. and they exactly. just want, they just want to stay by themselves. Mm-hmm. And you know, if you're a student, your classwork goes down. You stop attending class because of this isolation. Yeah. You start mm-hmm. isolating yourself. Mm-hmm. Your attendance. If you're a working class, your work performance just goes below average because you come to work on Monday morning. You're ukona mm-hmm. hamuva. Mm-hmm. On Friday, ata u concentrate u mesaikia ile revile bashini iko. So your work performance becomes alone, mm-hmm. and your uh, education. So you become 
no, I can't say a useless member of society, mm -hmm. but an underperforming member mm -hmm. of the society. Mm -hmm. I also oh. want to add to that and say, the, 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 I'm talking to me a drug sana. As in, kuna, kuna, as, as you always said, I'm trying to lose it in As in, for me, if you lose you, it's like you've lost self. Mm -hmm. You've lost self, and you're open, you're open to anything. Mm -hmm. And uh, there's uh, this old saying in Asamanga, if you don't stand for something, you'll fall yeah, for anything. Well, you'll yeah. fall for anything. Mm -hmm. And identity, I'll still go back to identity. If mm -hmm. you lose that, and you're subject to drugs, and like, you know, mm -hmm. to you've lost well. everything. Yes, yes, yes. Mm -hmm. Unless you have something to add as you well, go forward. Well, um, other effects are depression, mm -hmm. confusion. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's what I can say, because you have no stand, mm -hmm. just like identity. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, well, some other effects are maybe physical, mm -hmm. your health. Because mm -hmm. yeah. physically, you find that the people who drink alcohol, if you observe, and the people who smoke, yeah, you look at their, their lips, mm -hmm. they lose teeth, mm -hmm. or their teeth discolor. Mm -hmm. Their lips turn red. red and have cracks on them. So they are not really attractive people yeah. to look at. Uh, <laughs> ladies, we are, we, are, we are also visual. Men uh -huh. say they are visual. But you see a lady looking uh -huh. at Eston's brown teeth, you'll be like, hold oh, on. Uh, not, so, all, not all. Not all. Not all. Not all. No, but you, not see, all. you, see, you see, if your teeth have uh, and you know even your breath changes, yeah? yeah. I, I remember, oh, let me not mention this, <laughs> but I remember someone somewhere, let me just say, someone somewhere mm -hmm. was cigarette smoking, and mm -hmm. I, I love sitting at the front. Mm -hmm. So as I sat at the front and this person, I, I felt like, why did I have to sit at the front? Because, you know, you can feel the smoke smell is very strong. Mm -hmm. And this person, I'm sure, brushed with herbal, brushed with all types of, but mm -hmm. the smell is still, still there. Yeah. Because you, your system... You see, that is uh, your physical appearance sometimes is an outcry of your inward, in internal. Yeah. Yeah, in because yeah. your organs are showing from the outside. Yes, from mm -hmm. the outside that there's a problem in the inside. inside. Mm -hmm. You become slim, your digestive system has a problem. Mm -hmm. You start having liver cirrhosis, you start mm -hmm. having cancer, cancer mm -hmm. and you start having coughs, you start mm -hmm. having, you know, chest problems, mm -hmm. headaches. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, 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 for me, I believe this subject, we can only say so much. Mm -hmm. uh, we, can, uh, we cannot complete mm -hmm. this whole story. Mm -hmm. But then I, I would like uh, us to have one, uh, at least two, three statements on what is the Bible guidance on concerning drugs and substance abuse. And let us include mm -hmm. the brother, the mother, the sister, the young child, the youth mm -hmm. back at home, mm -hmm. who is still abusing Piriton, mm -hmm. the medical mm -hmm. drugs. Or yes. who is also, you know, uh, sometimes... Sometimes, maybe, dear viewer, you are not a, 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 you're not an abuser, but you're a victim. Mm -hmm. You're a family member mm -hmm. whose son, mm -hmm. whose a youth, whose sister, whose brother, mm -hmm. whose cousin, whose friend is an abuser of drugs. Or even whose dad or mom. Yes, or mm -hmm. even whose dad or mom. So what is there in the word of God mm -hmm. for you as a young person mm -hmm. about what drugs and substance abuse? So, I don't know. Mm -hmm. uh, scripture is actually very clear on uh, what we should and shouldn't be taking. Mm. Uh, there's a verse that says that eat honey for it is good. Mm -hmm. Then another verse, uh, I think it just comes a few verses after and says that do not take too much honey lest you vomit. Mm. You see, the Bible is actually very clear on what we're supposed to be co consuming. It, uh, it teaches us what we call temperance. Temperance, temperance basically is taking the right amount of that which needs to be consumed and stopping to take that which should not be consumed. Uh, you see, uh, so many times we find that uh, we tend to uh, use things like Pirito, we tend to use things like Panadol, we tend to use things like uh, Malera Queen, all, all, all these drugs which we can get over the counter, just because we might be feeling that we are sick. Mm. But does God have an alternative for us? God has always provided a solution for us, has mm -hmm. always provided a solution for us. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, it also speaks about alcohol, I think in Proverbs, yeah. it says that wine is a strong drink. Wine is a mocker and strong drink. Wine is a mocha. Let's stick with that. <laughs> wine is a mocha. And there's also another place where it says that give wine, give uh, wine to those who perish. Yes. And you know, scripture, scripture also at the same time says that uh, uh, the cross is of Foolish. foolishness to those who, who are perishing. Are perishing. Mm -hmm. So those people who have not conformed, those people who have not been transformed by the Spirit mm -hmm. are the people who you find that most of the time will be consuming 
alcohol but I, I still like what the bible actually says that uh, i can do all things through christ who strengthens me amen gloria as you well wonder. he has just said everything that i wanted to say <laughs> thank you <laughs> but i mean what i can say is uh our dear sisters and brothers uh relatives friends and family members I'd like to urge all of us to stay away from drug abuse. Mm -hmm. uh, it is torture, actually. It's not fun. It's typical torture. And if we just turn to our Christ Lord, we'll just have the peace that we f people find in drugs mm -hmm. and abusing substance. Well, you can just uh, try to be addicted to healthy uh, juices. <laughs> <laughs> Like, I'm addicted to avocado. <laughs> I take a lot of avocado. I can say I'm addicted to it because, well, it helps me internally and externally. Mm -hmm. I have no, I am not sick, and I thank God for that. So let's just not stick to one thing and seek God for, for knowledge and wisdom. Mm -hmm. well, well, viewer. Well, 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 just before Sam, you, you wind up the mm -hmm. shoe. Well, I think it's also important that we understand that our body is not ours. Mm -hmm. Our body is the temple of God. And the Bible even says we were bought with a price. Mm -hmm. Therefore glorify yeah. God with your bodies. Mm -hmm. So once we understand that this is not my body, as Masi Charono, this is not my body. As Eston, that is not your body. Mm -hmm. Gloria, not all. that is not your body. Sam, despite how handsome you are, <laughs> that is not your body. Because the Bible is clear that we were bought with a, with a price. price. Therefore, we should glorify God. Now, we cannot glorify God by lying in a sewage because we are drunk. We cannot glorify God by throwing up simply mm. because we, are, we used something that our body didn't lie. So once we understand that we were bought with a price, we are special to God, and God will not want us to abuse drugs that he did not intend mm -hmm. for our use. Mm -hmm. And that's why we should glorify God in our body. Yeah. And, and, and I think once we live with that attitude mm -hmm. that this is not my body, isim wiliangu, and it is the temple of God. And you know, wh when we invite God to tabernacle with us, then we invite him to a beautiful place. Mm -hmm. A beautiful place that we have not destroyed with, with harmful substances. Yes. <laughs> Thank you, Mercy. You actually took words right out of my mouth. I would like to usher you into a very, uh, a small segment that we have, an inspiration segment, where we're going to hear from Margaret Karaoke, who is an addiction counselor working with Turning Point Counseling Solutions. Please stay tuned. Drugs affect our relationships. Relationships are quite broad. They include such relationships as family relationships, work relationships, social relationships, religious relationships, or whatever other relationships we may find ourselves in. Relationships involve the art of interaction, communication, and sharing. We need to share our feelings, we need to share our thoughts, we need to share our ideas, we need to share our time. And how exactly do drugs affect these relationships? First of all, you know that somebody who uses drugs only wants to interact with those people who also use drugs like he does or she does. And so this person gets to cut themselves out from the rest of the people who do not use these drugs. So for example, if it's a child, this child gets alienated from the rest of the family. So this child cuts or jeopardizes the relationship that he or she had with the family. And then another thing is that even if this person will progress in their use of drugs, they'll get to a place where they'll get withdrawn. So they'll start living their own life, you know, minding their own business, doing their own things. All they think about is just um, getting this drug, which is their, their drug of choice. So you find that this person does not get to a point where he shares and interacts with these other people. And then drugs make somebody selfish. What do I mean when I say that somebody becomes selfish? This person spends their own resources by themselves, they spend their own time with themselves, they spend their own emotions with themselves, they do not have their ideas shared with anybody. And so these relationships are severed. And then another way that relationships are affected by drugs is that people get suspicious because this person can become a kleptomaniac, you know, whatever they see somewhere, they want to pick it so that they can either sell it or exchange it to get their drug of choice. Or this person becomes very suspicious of everybody, so they develop a concept we call paranoia. They are suspicious of everybody because they see like everybody just wants to get on their neck and ask them why they are taking these drugs or such like things. 
And then you find that these people um, get to a point where they do not want to be, uh, to be asked whatever is happening. So these people keep to themselves, as we have said, and then they do their own business. And then a relationship has to have a give and take element. So if I'm to be in a relationship with you, I give you something and you give me something in return. So somebody who's abusing drugs does not have much to give because all they think about is abusing or using their drug. And so they do not have the time, they do not have the resources, they do not have the emotions or feelings to share with other people. And so in essence, somebody who's using drugs all they have to do is to be at the receiving end. They have nothing much to give. And so the counsel I'd give to somebody who, for example, is already into drugs, I'd tell you that this is a bad place to find yourself in and there's help available for you. So you can get in contact with the people who offer rehabilitation services all over the country, on the internet. You can always get help that is near you. And for this person that is thinking that maybe this is something I'm missing out on, I have one counsel for you. Drugs are not good. This is not something that you'd want to find yourself in. Ask those who've been there. You know, this is something that once it gets into your mind, it's very hard for you to get yourself out of there. But that doesn't mean that you do not have hope. And then the best thing to, to say to you is that the best remedy for addiction is connection, not sobriety. So if you don't want to get addicted, connect with people and that way you will avoid addiction. Welcome back. We do hope that you have learned something from this segment and I would like to ask Marcy to tell us the last word as we go out, as we ash out. Just one. Yes, just one. One. <laughs> last word. Anyway, that's just on a light note. Uh -huh. uh, for me, I just finish by saying the, the, the immediate effect of taking drugs is nice. But when you look at it from a long-term point of view, I'm not sure when you think about it in 10 years' time, it's something you want to be doing. Mm -hmm. When you think about it in maybe, of course, five years might be immediate. You might be in high school. You might be in university. You might be working. You might be only 20. You might not. But if you look at it from 10 years, will you still want to be doing the same thing? Please think about that. Oh, thank you very much, Gloria. Thank you for coming back on set. Thank, thank you. you. So Eston, thank you for coming back again and again and again. It's always a pleasure. And thank you very much also for your contribution also, Masi. Thank you very much. We do hope that you're learning a lot. I would like to finish with saying this. Some of us like using uh, biblical phrases to suit our own understanding. I have met not one, but a couple of people who say, Bible says take a little bit of wine, nini, 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 but we're using it to, our, to suit our own understanding. I will urge us to uh, to seek further clarification before you start using Bible quotations or from other spiritual books to suit your own understanding so that you can pursue your selfish gains. I've been Samuel Mangi. Please join us next time. Don't forget to follow us on Facebook, Hope Channel Kenya. On Twitter, ho at Hope underscore Kenya. You can also follow me on Twitter at Sami Mangi and at MC Tocheron. Also on Facebook, she's Marcy Ter Cherono 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 yes. Yeah. Until next time, Bye-bye.